Wow, Gabby, so what are we doing? Extended abdominoplasty. Uh, extended abdominoplasty. And this lady, you know, she has like a medium paniculus. It's, it's not big, it's not small either, but, and when you see her, you may think, oh, she doesn't even need anything done, but, but she does have some excess skin and um, here, and she has a uh, prior scar here. I marked the end of the prior scar there. And she also has an umbilical hernia, so we may we may do uh, an umbilical hernia repair, right, Gabby? Right. And what do you see there? Yellow fat. Yellow fat. Do you see any bleeding at all? No bleeding. This is incredible, right? And this is the way we do these at the Cosmetic Surgical Center of El Cerrito. I believe this is a, a pretty unique technique. I, I actually never seen, not to be bragging or anything like that, but I've never seen any surgeon in, in, in the world, uh, all my 40 years of experience, I've never seen any surgeon uh, do this uh, in, a, in, a, in a bloodless manner. It is, it's, it's incredible. But it's, it's not one case or two cases or three cases. It's pretty much every case we do. And Edward, you, you've been here only a few times, right? Yeah. But you, 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 you just, uh, uh, you've seen surgery before, right? You've seen a lot of orthopedic surgery? Yeah. And uh, you never seen anything like this where there is like bloodless surgery? No. N only here? Yeah, only here. <laughs> Seems like I'm prompting him, but uh, he's telling the truth, right? Yeah. 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 And I only know because I already asked him those questions before. Thank you. Okay, so uh, look at this. What, what is this membrane, this white membrane that we're going through right here? Gabby, yeah, you see that? Scarpus fascia. It's fascia. And scarpus fascia, white membrane, it separates what? Superficial fat and deep fat. Show him the superficial fat, Gabby. That's the superficial fat right there, and the deep fat right there, and right under there, what are we going to find, Gabby? The rectus abdominal fascia. The rectus abdominal wall fascia, which is this stronger membrane that you see there. You see that? That's much stronger. You see that? And that's what covers, the, of course, the rectus abdominal wall muscle, or the thick fat that people talk about. You see the edge of that? Beautiful. Bloodless surgery. This is... And you know, uh, Edward, you you're gonna uh, be a uh, a doctor, right? You you studying, right? Yeah. So be, become a doctor, right? Uh -huh. uh, and what do you think about this, huh? It's wonderful. You can see all the anatomy. In beautiful anatomy, right? It's great for medical student uh, or any 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 doctor, really. I I including me. I marvel at this, and uh, I've been a surgeon for forty years. And I marvel when I see this. It's not because it's me. It's just because this is incredible. You don't even see this in a cadaver when you, you know, when you go to medical school, and, or even when we do uh, workshops with cadaver. You, you don't see the structures like this because the cadaver is all like, you know, it's all you know already kind of. The anatomy is not the same. It's all kind of brown or whatever. There is no bleeding in the cadaver, of course, but uh, but the anatomy is not like this. This is just gorgeous anatomy. It's beautiful. Thank you. Why? Right. So, what? A, look at the belly button. She has the most gorgeous belly button, Gabby. Uh, it's a small, tiny belly button, but she does have a hernia there. And uh, we're going to uh, uh, go around that hernia. Do you see the scar right there, Gabby? Why don't you point the scar? The prior surgery, she actually heals well, which is a good thing for her. And there is not much fat here, you know, so we're just gonna go down. I love this part, uh, but do you see how we do this, Edward? Mm -hmm. And there is absolutely no bleeding. It, it, it just, it's just perplexing to me even. Look at that, incredible, look at that. Look how dry this is. This is the paniculus we call, we're gonna get rid of it. Now we're gonna go around the hernia, so I'm gonna make it a little bigger than what her actual belly button is to give myself some error, margin of error, right? I don't want to cut into the bowel or cut into, uh, you know, uh, I believe that probably what she has in there is uh, not bowel, but just fat. But anyway, we want to be very careful and we're going to go to the stalk of that belly button and find the, ourselves that hernia. We're going to do that in a little bit. In the meantime, Javi is going to retract and this is the 
the, we're probably around here, there is some major arteries right here. So you gotta be very careful because uh, you see how wide and immaculate this is. I hit one of those arteries, man, all these will be red. And that's the way it is. Usually when you do this type of surgery, it's hard to see the anatomy. The way I learned how to do this, you know, you just go very fast through this and, and there is bleeding everywhere. Like, like what you've seen before, Edward, on orthopedic surgery, right? All yeah. this is red, right? You don't see the yellow. And here it is, that's, that's one of the arteries right here. But how can you see that artery, you see? And I'm gonna go through it. I think that's the uh, branch of the inferior epigastric artery actually right there. Uh, and you were just saving, so we missed that. But, but you see absolutely no bleeding. And I took down the biggest artery around here. It's another one right here. And the reason I can see them is because uh, the anatomy is so clear and so beautiful, right? There is not a drop of blood. That's why I can see them. Otherwise, uh, you just go through these blood vessels and there's bleeding and then you have to suture the blood vessels and look for the bleeding blood vessel. So even though I do this procedure much slower, uh, at the end of the, time, the day, we're very efficient because we uh, save time. How do we save time? Because we don't have to be looking for the bleeding vessel, right? Because we identify them, we burn them, and uh, there is no bleeding. And, and this has many advantages. Even a little kid can, can notice how, you know, when there is no bleeding, it's better, right? There is no anemia. There is not that post-oppressive exhaustion. The patient is tired the next day because they lost blood, right? But here, it's bloodless. And so in addition to that, there is much less risk of infection, right? We know when there is more bleeding, medically speaking, we know that there is more risk of infection. You see how this looks like a little mushroom there? Is, is the belly button. We're gonna go on the other side now. And same here, and be very careful to retract, not too hard because if you, even if Gabby were to retract, uh, she could tear an artery. Like I think an, an artery is coming here, you see? I can see the tension, and I believe that's probably the other, on the other side, see? It's probably gonna come around here. So I'm already, I already know where it is, and I'm just looking for it and I'm going very, very carefully. See, and I think this is probably gonna be around here. So it's important to know the anatomy and know where the vessels are, identify. And, and see, there it is, see? So I got it, I got it right here. And uh, so I, I kinda know where they are, you know? And, uh, and you know, every surgeon knows that, of course. But the thing about it is that I can see clearly. I can see, it's like, a, I'm driving during the day, you know, I can see clearly. And the way that I was taught how to do this surgery and the way that most doctors do this surgery is like driving at night because uh, everything is obscured by all the bleeding. The bleeding obscures the anatomy. Here you can see the rectus abdominal wall fascia here, the edge of the rectus abdominal wall fascia, the deep fat here. You can even see scarpus here. You see scarpus right here? Scarpus, right? and superficial fat. So this is just a, a lesson in anatomy and it is so beautiful. I love to do this this way. I see uh, the image of God here. Um, I can go to sleep at night very comfortably and without any concerns because I know my patients are safe. They're not gonna be bleeding. Of course, any patient can bleed afterwards, and they, you know, but I know that I did the best that I could, right? Uh, to, to to prevent this. How can the patients bleed afterwards? Well, if they make an effort, right, to have a bowel movement or if they don't follow instructions, one of these vessels that we electrocoagulated could pop up, and, uh, but we never really have to bring any patient back for surgery for bleeding here at the Cosmetic Surgical Center of Los Cerritos. It's, it's incredible. So, and we don't even have blood here to transfuse or anything like that, because uh, uh, that risk is extremely low, right? So, uh, and most surgery centers don't don't have that capacity. We could have blood here, but we just never done that, and, and uh, we don't need to. Uh, we, we've been operating here for the last 20 years, and like I said, uh, no bleeding. So. Wow! And so I'm peeling the this belly button, the stalk of the belly button. Uh, they call it we're skeletonizing, you know. So, but you know, I want to leave a little bit of fat behind. But you can see. She has a hernia here inside. You can see that, that bulge there.
that's the hernia. And so we're gonna identify it and, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, take care of that. And w when you do that, and uh, see, I think this bulge here is part of that hernia valley. You see that right there? So that's part of that hernia, so you gotta be very careful. See, yeah, there it is, that's the hernia right there. Right there in this area, that's the hernia. So, so you can see it right there. And, uh, and it bulges all the way to here, you see? And so that's actually a good size hernia there. But we are getting to this hernia uh, with absolutely no, no bleeding at all. So we can identify it and we're gonna take care of it, right? But look at the, you, you see the bulge there that I'm talking about, this yes. thing? That's the hernia right there, you see it? And we're gonna, we're gonna get closer to it but we're doing this in a controlled manner with absolutely no bleeding and with great visibility. The fact that we can even see this hernia like that, there's a lot, there's a little blood vessel there. And it's because of the beautiful dissection that we can do here at the Cosmetic Surgical Center with this impeccable bloodless technique. It's just amazing. You can see the bulge now. If I go like that, you see that bulge there? Just pull, pull up a little bit. You see that, uh, Wendy? Yes. Yeah. So that's the hernia right there. So we identified it and we're going to take care of it later on. Because a hernia, what is a hernia? A hernia is, in this case, is probably fat that has come out. Oh. So a hernia is uh, a structure, a uh, part of the body, right? Either, in this case, it's probably intra-abdominal fat. So it's the same fat but fat that belongs inside, uh, that fat is the one that is uh, around the intestines, right? That, that puts the intestines together, it's around uh, the, the stomach, uh, and, 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 and you see it all that, right? But that, is this a hernia, this is a, a blood vessel there, I don't know if you can see it. It's a little bit of minimal bleeding, so we do have bleeding, but it's minimal. You see, another blood vessel here. I don't know if you can see it from there, but see, I'm gonna go ahead and electrocoagulate it. Electrocoagulate means electrical current. This is a bobby or an electrocoagulator. It was uh, named after uh, the brother-in-law of a famous surgeon that was doing a barbecue. And the surgeon noticed that the brother, his name was Bobby, cut himself with, with, when he was barbecuing and he didn't bleed. So the surgeon went, wow. My brother-in-law cut himself, yet he didn't bleed. What the hell is going on? And so he invented this instrument and named it after his brother-in-law as the body. It's an electrocoagulator. Uh, and uh, and what it does is it, it causes electrical current burns, right? And when you burn the tissue, you burn the blood vessels, you close them and they don't bleed. That's basically the principle besides this, this, this instrument. And it, some surgeons say that, you know, that maybe they think that this is like a laser or that there is radio frequency here and they come here and then they realize, no, because this instrument looks a little different because it has an evacuator. In other words, it evacuates or sucks up the smoke, the toxic fumes. So Edward, does this one look, a, this electrocoagulator looks a little different from the ones that the orthopedic surgeons use or is this, do they have this one too? They don't have the, the vacuum. On they it. don't have the vacuum, right? So so the fumes go all out mm -hmm. and you, you see, we, we don't like to, so what they do basically is they have another instrument that's called a um, uh, suction or it's a young power, right, uh, suction. And we do have that here, but we don't even connect it. We don't even put it on because that's mostly to suck all the blood. And there is no blood here. So, so all you see here is really a little bit of fluid. And this fluid is, is Naman medicine. Uh, in addition to this, this Naman medicine uh, is going to have her have much less pain, less bruising, less bleeding, and a much faster recovery because this Naman medicine is gonna last for a good, two days, 48 hours, so it, it's incredible. Um, and so now we have raised the flap all the way up to the coastal margin and to the cyphoid process, which is the, the tip of the sternum. And these are the ribs, I can feel the ribs there. Yeah, you know what? 
you can see the semilunar lines here too, which are the lines, you know, at either side of the rectus abdominal wall, muscle or the six pack that everybody has. And because she's not gonna be pregnant anymore, these muscles have separated in the midline and we're gonna put them together, it's what is called a rectus placation. And here is your belly button, looks like a little mushroom. And here is the hernia that we're gonna repair later. Thank you. Okay, so this is your belly button. I freed uh, the hernia from its adhesions, it's, it's attached to the hole. That's a congenital, meaning that she was born with it whole. And I'm gonna try and reduce it manually. I'm gonna try, reduce it, meaning I wanna try and put it back with my fingers gently inside. You can see that it's kind of going in uh, and uh, inside that hole and see if I can just push it in with my finger and I'm holding on to the belly button and I think it's going in, you see? I reduced it back. You could also cut it, you know, but I decided to reduce this one back and you can see there is a hole in there. It's a clamp that is blunt, so it's not gonna injure anything. And this hole, we're gonna close. And that's hole that she had from birth, you know, from she was a little girl. And uh, so you, I don't know if you can, can you see the hole right there? You see that, you see? And so it's right at the base of the umbilicus, uh, uh, right around, you know, from maybe, I wanna say in the clock from maybe the 10, position to the 12 o'clock position, right Gabby? Right. And I can see here the edge of this fascia and this is for those doctors watching out there, this is all proline uh, and uh, we're doing what is called a figure of eight. This is a permanent suture, right? This is part of the, the fat of the hernia. I could potentially just cut it and uh, cut the and the, the hernia. So the hernia is a, a structure, either anatomical structure, either like in this case, probably just fat, right? And it could be bowel that comes out. Um, and if and notice how tiny this hole is. Uh, this is a hole that she had from birth and I'm gonna test it just to make sure that I close the hole completely and that there is not, you know, like another hole near it that, see the clamp doesn't go down anymore. Uh, so the hole is closed. There is a risk of an artery being uh, injured here and may compromise the blood supply to the belly button. So this belly button may die, let's hope it doesn't die, but that's a risk when you do umbilical hernia repair and a tummy tuck at the same time. Uh, but. She knew that and she knows the risk and hopefully this belly button can survive. But I don't see a hernia, I don't feel a hernia here anymore. The hernia has been repaired back to the intra-abdominal cavity. So the hernia is an abnormal opening on the fascia and through that opening, something comes up. Usually fat, but it could be bowel, it could be an organ, it could be something else. And it can happen in many areas in the body, but this is a common area, so it's an umbilical hernia repair, I would say maybe supra umbilical. This is an umbilical hernia, because uh, it's just above the belly button, right at the base or the, the, the base of the stalk of the belly button. Belly button is like a, like a tree or like a mushroom. This is the stalk and this is, looks like a mushroom, right? Like that. Anyway, so now we're gonna close uh, and we're gonna do the rectus vacation. We're gonna do a double closure over that abdominal hernia. Thank you. Okay, so what we're doing now is uh, we're cutting the, the specimen. The specimen is what we're gonna throw away, right, Gabby? Right. And I'm gonna extend myself a little bit past this line here. And we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how we do this. Uh, and I'm gonna open up this a little bit more. So it'll give me more margin so that I, when I open her up, I'm gonna go a little bit more on the, and you see the blood vessel here? See? It's a little capillary, but I burn it so that there is no bleeding, right? And I'm gonna go on this side of the wound so that there is, you know, less risk of scarring and uh, you know, deformation and that sort of thing. See? Because 
I'm going to burn the edge, but I'm going to burn the edge on the side that we're going to throw away, you see? Uh, so that's also another technique that makes it less, less chance of, you know, uh, her healing badly, right? Thank you. You can see, you can see superficial fat. Right now I'm going through scarpas. You see scarpas right there? Deep fat. This is just beautiful anatomy, you guys. And we're doing the removal of the specimen. When I learned how to do this, uh, they told me, the surgeon that was teaching me how to do this told me to cut this with the mayo scissors or, or a knife. And I saw him do that too. And man, it would be a, a lot of bleeding, right? But you do it in a few seconds, right? Uh, but you easily, with this type of surgery, typically you bleed, you know, one or two cups of blood. But the way we do this here, you can see with your own eyes, you know, how, how much blood loss there is in here. I'll leave it up to your judgment. But usually in the operative report, we put that the patient bled maybe five ml, which is uh, a half a teaspoon, right? Or a teaspoon, right? So our patients bleed maybe one or two teaspoons or a half of a teaspoon. It's incredible. Look at this beautiful, beautiful anatomy. Uh, just gorgeous. She had liposuction before. So you see a little bit of the scarring of liposuction. This is liposuction scarring right here. Uh, but bloodless surgery, incredible. See? Beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Specimen on the left side, small piece, no bleeding. Thank you. And this is the specimen on the right side, Dr. Patino, just size, no bleeding. Thank, Thank you. you. Wow, so what are we doing, Gabby? Making the new home for the belly button. New home for the belly button. This part of the abdominoplasty is not part of the described abdominoplasty technique. This is nothing that I learned during my training, but it's something that I came up with because. The only, there is no really no purpose of doing this. The only purpose for me is that I don't want bleeding. And so I'm cutting down to the dermis, which is an avascular layer of the skin, meaning that it has no blood vessels, right, Gabby? Right. And what is Gabby gonna do now? I'm gonna cool the area. You're gonna cool the area because this is heat and we don't wanna burn the edge of the, of the, because this is her actual belly button that we're creating here, right? So. I just want to go down to my finger and she doesn't have much fat there so I'm going to go pretty quick in there and she's going to cool the area. This is room temperature saline. I love this part. Thank you. Okay, so now this part also bleeds a lot normally when in the technique that I learned but the technique that I use there's no bleeding. Why? Because we're I'm going to put the rectus abdominal wall muscles together. So the muscles are very vascular. This is the rectus abdominal wall. This is the six pack that people have. And these are very, very vascular. There is a lot of blood vessels. But when I learned how to do this procedure, you know, many years ago, uh, I myself would cause a lot of bleeding by doing these stitches. Just by putting the stitch, there would be a lot of bleeding. And here I developed this technique uh, where there is completely bloodless. Look at that. And she does have a significant amount of intra-abdominal fat that we are going to push in. And that hernia was a piece of that intra-abdominal fat that doesn't belong outside, right? It belongs inside. Intra means inside. Intra-abdominal, inside the abdomen, right? So that intra-abdominal fat is what gives you that look that you're not flat, but it's, it gives you that look, right? That convexity on your abdomen and of course women don't like it and you know i don't know if you saw that movie gone with the wind it's a very famous movie and scarlett o'hare um, is putting a tight corset uh, on to get that nice waist and so this is basically the same thing that we're doing here uh, we are doing an internal corset but this is permanent right these are permanent sutures this is a permanent stitch there. Thank you. Okay, so I wanna show you, we already did the rectus placation above the belly button, and now we're going below the belly button, but look how one single stitch, what, what an incredible difference, you see that? And at the end of the day, we're gonna push all these inside. You know, it, initially it didn't look like she had much intra-abdominal fat on the exam, 
uh, before surgery, but man, it is obvious that she does have some significant intra-abdominal fat and some of that fat had come out through an abnormal opening, which is called a hernia, and we reduced that hernia, uh, and she is looking great. At the end of the day, she's gonna be flat, nice and tight like that, thank you. What I'm doing is vancomycin irrigation. This is something we do routinely with the direct application above, all the way up there and below the belly button. We're gonna get the belly button out through new skin, through this hole that we already made over here, you see? Thank you. And so uh, she looks good. This is a tummy tuck and a hernia repair with no liposuction whatsoever. She had a very, very tiny belly button, as you can tell, and I try to recreate it and uh, she looks nice. Uh, notice also that we have a little bit of high definition here, the semilunar lines on either side. I don't know if you can see Wendy from there. Um, and then of course, this is with zero liposuction. Later on, if she wants to have more definition, we can do high definition liposculpture and really uh, make those abdominal wall muscles uh, look uh, more uh, athletic, right? But this is a high definition lipos uh, abdominoplasty with zero liposuction. Beautiful Something. belly button. Thank you so very much. And she has a hernia. So she had a hernia, we reduced it. And we also covered the hernia with the rectus So I think she's gonna be happy. Thank you.